Hello, welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. And for the next hour, we'll be practicing English in conversation, everyone. We'll have a chance to speak. Uh, fairly simple, straightforward topic today, the environment. Uh, all all uh, abilities and levels are welcome to join. Um, just going to talk about the environment and uh, uh, maybe problems in, in your area. Uh, and uh, hopefully you pick up a little vocabulary and get a chance to practice speaking English. That's about it. Uh, uh, Heidi, hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. How are you today? Uh, I went to the shopping mall. I bought some takoyaki, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that noodles? Ah, no. no. Oh, what what is takoyaki? Round shape. Oh, almost all part of that was a uh, flower. <laughs> and the inside of the kind of small bowl, there's a taco, is uh, octopus. A piece ah. of octopus. <laughs> right. Okay, now I remember. Mm -hmm. Oh. I forgot. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know what that is. Uh, yeah. I, I forgot about it. I forgot, though. I, that shape is like your head. <laughs> like my head? Yeah. Well, it must be. Very, <laughs> and indeed, it, it must be very a very attractive dish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, thanks. Nice to have you in class. Uh, hello, Pablo. Welcome. Hey, Pablo. Pablo, where are you? Pablo, long time no see. What's going on? Pablo, I can't hear you. Sorry to sorry to say. Don't know if you can make some adjustments there. That would be great. Uh, hello, Igor. How are you? Hello, teacher. I'm fine. How are you? Terrific. <clears throat> oh, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good. Bye. I see you changed your image. Yes, I did. I got a new hairstyle and a new matching headset to match my <laughs> hairstyle. So, yeah, I got the whole set. Uh, yeah, uh, I did. Uh, hello, Wenting. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing today, Wenting? Pretty good. Pretty good. Cool. Glad to hear it. Welcome to the class. Uh, Pablo, are you auditory? Hi, Oakley. Yes, you are. Uh, hello. Uh, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thanks. Cool. Glad to hear it. Uh, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the environment in a sort of general way, and we'll go whichever way the wind blows us, I suppose, uh, in the discussion. So... Uh, let's start talking about, uh, uh, I'm going to start with Heidi. She was the first one in. Heidi, uh, are there any environmental problems or concerns in your area, like around where you live? Mm, my area, we don't have any problem. But um, basically, Japan had a um, high mountains, the center of uh, uh, the land, mainland. So uh, we have very narrow frame place. So uh, they developed even the mountainside. So many times we have a landslide or a mudslide. It, now, okay, this this is interesting. Is it because is it because of development? Is it because yes, it's because of development? Because they cut all the trees and the trees. Yeah. Cool hold the soil down and prevent yeah, right. mm -hmm. okay it's well known uh, that trees and vegetation that's mm -hmm. plants prevent uh, not, not only the land of fried or mud of fried, even the animals inside the mountain bears and the wild pork or uh, some such kind of uh, animals sometimes uh, they came to city side because of lack of food 
Ah. Interesting. That's happening in the United States a lot. Um, animals are wandering into the city. Yes. That's not cool. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, yes. Okay. Vegetation and trees hold the soil and prevent erosion. Erosion is when water, rain, so forth, melting snow, uh, washes away the surface soil. Or earth, dirt. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now in Hiroshima, uh, they they had a very big mudslide. Then over 50 people already died, and over 20 people is still missing. People are still really? missing. Really? Yes. Still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awful. Because uh, the mountain is quite soft because of a uh, heavy rain. So sometimes it has still rain. Then uh, even the people uh, helping them, or soldiers, or volunteers, need to evacuate from that place. So they can't uh, keep um, uh, the digging the soil. Uh, hmm. Because uh, it's, it's still unstable. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, that's... Yeah, okay, well, yeah, actually, that's multiple problems. <laughs> All right, overdevelopment, which, yeah, which I've, God, I've seen some things really here in the Philippines that just make me do this. It's easier to do now I've cut my hair. I do this. <laughs> what are you thinking? What could they be thinking? Uh, seriously, I, I go to the countryside. Every time I go to the countryside, I see this, and it just really drives me crazy. Yeah. This is what this is what they do. They and it's so short-sighted. All right, it's not looking into the future. Mm -hmm. What they do is they burn an entire mountainside. I'm talking an entire mountain. They mm -hmm. just burn the whole thing mm -hmm. simply to make charcoal. Mm -hmm. which, and they they put the black half-cooked wood into bags and they sell it in the market because uh, some people common problems, sure. environmental problems like uh, uh, air pollution or water pollution uh, we already finished uh, we already overcame from that situation so rivers and the air is quite clean yeah nowadays. yes except when the wind blows from China <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, when they when they do this, when they burn a mountainside, the, it's, it's obvious to me that the repercussions. They have a rainy monsoon season. It's a regular event. Everybody knows it's coming. So inevitably, when the rainy season comes and there's no more forest or vegetation on the mountain, half the mountain slides into the river. The river becomes filled with silt. Very mm -hmm. Silt is very small sand and dirt particles. Uh, the silt chokes the river and literally chokes the fish and crabs and shrimp that yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's right. fisher, mm -hmm. the fishermen down the river rely on for their, you know, for their economic well-being. So, okay, they burn the mountain, they make some charcoal, they make a few dollars, they sell that. The, that money's gone. It's going to take many years for the trees to grow back. Meanwhile, silt pours in the river, and the fishermen have no way to make a living for the next 10 years. It's so ridiculous. It really drives me crazy. It's so short-sighted. Anyway, all right, let, let me talk to some other folks here. Uh, uh, Igor. Oh, uh, Igor, before I, uh, I talk to you, let me just say hello to Helena. Hi, Helena. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Thank we'll, we'll, you. We'll get to you in a minute, okay? We'll get back to you in a little bit. Right. Uh, I want to talk to Igor. Igor, are there any pressing uh, environmental issues? Well, we have this river here, and this river is not really clean, and factories, uh, for a long time, they were just dropping all their waste into this river and now this river is like like a pit <laughs> really like a pit and uh, it, like a pit uh, <laughs> uh, like, like 
life sounds really bad. <laughs> and uh, when I was young, it was really, really safe to swim in that river. But right now, uh, they measured their the pollution of this river, and it was said that the pollution was uh, 256 times uh, uh, larger than it is allowed <laughs> to be oh safe. My god. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So, that's a real problem here. And other than that, we have uh, uh, an oil factory, and the oil factory, you know, it's sold in the air for some reason. <laughs> Not so much, but it still does. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'd say there are a lot, a lot of things we need to change here. <laughs> yeah, the river sounds scary. Uh, we normally say an oil refinery. That's the, I think, I, <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, uh, instead of oil factory, oil refinery, where they, I don't know, prepare whatever they do to the oil to make it usable. I see. Uh, okay, the river, the river sounds scary. Whenever I hear about that, I think about uh, the Simpsons, that cartoon show, and like the there's always the the fish with three eyes. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Well, actually, there is little to no fish in this river now. Uh, yeah. Mm. We had to. We had to. Uh, we had to have. Uh, we used to have a really good amount of fish there, and there were even kind of fish that is only present in really clean water. But right now, those fish are really scarce, and they don't grow much than, you know, like 10 centimeters long. But uh, this breed, you know, it can be as, uh, as long as 2 meters if it's fully developed. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, how long does this river take to reach the ocean or the wherever it goes? I don't know. Black well, Sea, Caspian, or maybe you've heard of, maybe you've heard of this river because this river is pretty large, pretty big, yeah. and the river is called Irtish. Okay. It's, it's one of the largest uh, rivers in Asia. And I think it's about 5,000 kilometers long. That's long. <laughs> okay. Is the region also have the same name? Uh, sorry? Does the region have, the re the area have the same name as the river? You're uh, just... No. No. No? Okay. I, I'm just confused. Just, never mind. It's just me being geographically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, that is serious. Uh, well, wow. there are some, there are some good things about that. You know, it's like, the, uh, well, they banned this uh, this thing to just uh, drop off the waste into the water, and right now, at least they say that it's uh, becoming to get cleaner. <laughs> Okay. But, but I don't I don't really know if it's true, but maybe. <laughs> right. Okay. For so example, they're... for example, uh, there is no the no distinctive stench right now. <laughs> 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 okay. No perceptible that you can perceive. No perceptible stench. Good word. <laughs> uh, stench uh, is a bad odor. All right. Good, nice vocabulary there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, good. I hope. Uh, I hope progress continues. Hopefully. Uh, okay. Uh, Pablo, how about how about where you live? Where do you live again, Pablo? I live in Colombia. Colombia, right? Okay. All right. Do, are there any environmental issues or problems? Where you live in your yeah. area or in your country? We're here um, in my city. We have uh, some lakes, um, uh, 
some people have a uh, sea wave or what's the way what's the water uh, about uh, over these uh, lakes yeah and they uh and they are uh, and this air uh, is a contamination focus over the lake yeah. um, and all the time the, this lake have more and more steel and organic material at the at the bottom. Okay. Okay. And uh, with uh, and the water have more and more problems with uh, the with odors and and taste for the people. Taste. Yeah. I'm not tasting it. <laughs> okay. So if, let me see if I can rephrase if I understood you. Um, some people are dumping sewage and raw sewage and wastewater I into the lakes. Yes. Who? Is it factories? Is it businesses? Or is it pri pri private citizens? No. Or so uh, some uh, illegal neighbors neighborhoods illegals uh, that they don't have uh, the, the the enough paper to have to to stay in this place uh, they uh, they just build uh, her, he, uh, their house uh -huh. without uh, a permission uh, without uh, yes, indeed, an authorization. Uh, without uh, an authorization. Got it. Okay. Uh, very good. This is a problem also in the Philippines. I understand, Pablo. You're talking about squatters. All right. They don't. Squatters. They don't own the land. They move on to some open land and they just build like um, sort of primitive temporary shelters tin and yeah. whatever they can find wood and pieces of tin and plastic right and yes. then they don't build proper sewer proper bathrooms really so whoop, there goes the sewage right into the lake that's is that what we're talking about yeah yes yep see uh, same thing happens here in the Philippines I know exactly what you mean um, yeah, and in the Philippines, actually, it's extremely dangerous because what they do is they, the main sewers, like in the city, get full of garbage. They also don't take care of their garbage. So the garbage fills the sewer. These are very poor people. So they just throw their garbage and their sewage runs right into the, basically, into the river, which goes into the ocean. But also they they fill the sewer so when there's a flood the water has nowhere to go so it floods the city and even worse it floods the city with with sewage so when you have to walk through the water to get to work it's not fun <laughs> yes and um, it's more all yeah. with the time uh, it's most difficult to Treat this water. Uh, yes. Um, it more expensive, and with the summer, when the the level going down, uh, the the bad uh, organolytic uh, conditions or the odors and. Um, uh, the others in the water increase. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So in the summer, the lake levels lower. Lake levels lower. Yeah, and of course that increases the toxicity or it increases bacteria level. Obviously, clearly. It, okay, I see. Ooh, problematic. Does it smell? Is there a stench? 
Can you yes. smell it, Pablo? Oh. oh, that's when you know you have a problem. When you it, it smells so bad you can hardly stand it. Then you know you have a problem. No, well, the the when the water have a little smell, uh, it doesn't mean that is not a uh, potable or potable okay. water. All right. Yeah. But word. it it don't it condi that condition don't like to the to the people. Yeah. But uh -huh. it doesn't mean that it it is not a a, a bad water. Okay. Okay. It's just a it, it make it make uh stay uh um and uh, legal uh on legal parameters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But it's it not uh people uh, unlike this on water. Okay, well, I like this odor. Oh, well. I, I would be nervous. Okay, I, I personally, I would be very nervous about it. Um, potable, good word, by the way. Potable means actually drinkable. Uh, potable, just, drinkable. Yeah, 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 that's a good word, good vocabulary word. All right. Well, uh, okay, Pablo. Hmm. Well, maybe, hopefully, I'll get back to you. Maybe we can talk solutions later. Okay, Wenting. Hi. Wenting. Hi. How about uh, where you live? Are there um, environmental problems? Um, okay. I love, live in New York, but I'm not familiar with New York. I want to say something about Shanghai. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just You're... Shanghai. Let's go to Shanghai. Okay, go ahead. Um, I think there are j just. Uh, I want to mention two problems. The first is air pollution. It's just very common. Uh, though there is very few in industrial factor in Shanghai, but there are so many auto uh, automobiles. Mo so. Uh, the exhaust pollute um, pollutes the air. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know because when I am still in Shanghai, I think the air is okay. It's just so so not so bad. But just in the last year, it was said that the air in Shanghai is just terrible. The PM two point five mm, is. The percentage of PM 2.5 is really, really high. So everybody needs to have a mask, go outside the house. Okay. Um, and also there is hmm, land, uh, land subsidence in Shanghai. Uh, I mean the what? land is sinking. Oh, okay. All right. So is subsidence a word? I mean, it makes sense. With I know subside means to lower, going down. Really? But yes. um, there's all those skyscrapers in Shanghai. Yes. Just, <laughs> um, it's not so terrible. Just because it's just the sinking very slow. Uh, just the one reason to cross the thing. Thinking is because of the overuse of underground water. Uh -huh. uh, right. It's maybe not the main reason in Shanghai. Uh, uh, just, just like other uh, other areas, because the soil in Shanghai is is soft. Because right. it's in tight mouth of the Yangtze River, so the soil is soft uh, inherently. Right, because uh, river deltas, as I mentioned earlier, silt washes down the river, and so river delta, that's a delta is the area where it starts to spread out and go into the ocean, 
inherently is soft because it's silt built up over time, right? Yes, yes. And Shanghai, it actually has very short history. It is just by the soil, maybe less than 1,000 years, I think. Okay. Uh, and, and another reason is that because of the skyscrapers, and skyscrapers, the density, the height, make too much pressure to the ground. Yeah. And also, we now have built over 10 lines of subways. So. Say again? Uh, built over? Um, over 10 lines of subways. Trains. Just I underground. Have... Oh, subways. Ten underground subways. Okay. Underground subways. So, you know, it will promote the, the thinking. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, question, if, uh, Wenting, if uh, ocean levels rise, as many predict, uh, due to global warming, uh, many people are predicting ocean levels rising. Is this going to affect Shanghai? I think yes. Um, the sea level of Shanghai is not high. It's quite low. Yeah. So, definitely. Yeah. So maybe we will move into the inland uh, slowly. Slowly? Just build the next building inland and slowly? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and or maybe we can build... Uh, use the war to, or ah. I I don't know. Build a seawall, which is yes. uh, in in the United States. That's what they're doing in a lot of the Atlantic coast because uh, the uh, hurricanes are causing much more damage because the oceans are higher and the storms are worse and. Uh, and it's washing away the ocean, the shoreline, and that's, they're attempting to fix it by making seawalls. Uh, hmm. I have my doubts, but that's opinion. <laughs> I don't know how you fight the ocean. That's, that thing's awfully big. Uh, I don't know. But oh, actually, yeah. the storm in Shanghai is not, it's not very uh, strong. I don't know why, but uh, we have some storms, but just relatively calm storms. Uh, okay, well, I wouldn't trust that to never change, uh, personally. Well, I, you know, yeah, okay, uh, I can, uh, I can kind of relate to a lot of what you're saying. This. I don't know. Uh, if sea levels rise, I think a lot of places are going to be in trouble, frankly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome to the class, Luo. Hello. Uh, nice to nice to see you again, Oakley. Likewise. Always a pleasure. I'll get back to you in a second. I, I want to talk to Elena over here. Uh, I'll get back to you after. Uh, thanks, Wenting. That was actually very interesting. Thank you very much. Elena. Uh, hi. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. Okay. What part? Sao Paulo, Rio? Uh, Rio. Brazil. Rio. 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 Ah, I, I, I have a couple friends in Rio, um, so I have a good idea what you're going to tell me about. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, what are environmental problems... Do they have in Rio? Um, I'm I'm quite worried now because uh, while listening to to my classmates, I can see that the problems are the same everywhere. Indeed. It's a world. It's really a worldwide problem. And and you teacher said a word and an an adjective and it's short sighted. Yeah. And I think that air, uh, that all kinds of pollution have everything to do 
with being short-sighted from a single person to a factory to the government in all levels. I think being uh, short-sighted is a, a key a, is a key word word in this in this problem because if we don't think uh, about the future, we don't care about pollution. So I think the planet's the way it is because people don't care. Mm. Or people just care about money. Uh, here in Rio, uh, we have all kinds of pollution you can, you can list. Uh, air pollution, water pollution, and all the problems they bring. So the population throws garbage everywhere. When they're walking, they throw it on the sidewalk, on the middle of the streets, and when they're driving, they throw garbage from the window of the car. So they really don't care, and everyone is short-sighted. So I, I, I really see no hope uh, for the next 100 years, you know. That's very serious. Well, Helena, just I think you uh, your remarks are extremely astute. And uh, obviously, I said it first, so I obviously I completely agree with you. The problem is short-sightedness. I agree, but you seem despairing. So let me uh, attempt to cheer you up a little okay. bit. Uh, I just want to tell you, uh, I'm 50 years old, and when I was younger, uh, I witnessed. Back in the 70s in the United States, I, I grew up in the countryside, but nevertheless, the rivers were becoming polluted, the sides of the road, uh, people threw bottles and garbage out of their cars, and people generally just dumped garbage wherever they were. Mm -hmm. Americans uh, thought the same way. We have the same problem here in the Philippines. It really depresses me. I see parents walking down the street. They'll open a small bag of chips, share it with their child or children, and then they'll throw the, you know, the bag right in the street in front mm -hmm. of their children. They're teaching their children this is okay. It really depresses me. However, <coughs> this is no different than the United States 40 years ago. Uh, however, things were done. Um, also, the trees were dying because of acid rain, sulfur mm -hmm. dioxide from factories. Because I lived in the east and the jet stream blows east, the mountains where all the coniferous, the pine trees on the mountains were orange, red, dying, dead. There was entire big swaths of dead forest. There were mm -hmm. mountaintop uh, ponds that used to hold many trout and fish, dead, nothing alive in them. This was real. This was happening. Well, let me let me tell you uh, things like um, bottle laws that you could return bottles and cans for a deposit. So people stopped throwing their bottles and cans. Uh, uh, another thing that happened um, in my state, they enacted a green up day where uh, every spring, one day, many people would volunteer to pick up garbage. One day, and the state, the government, you have special orange bags, and you fill up the orange bags with as much garbage as you can. And the state had many trucks that would come pick up all the garbage for free. So e everywhere, in parks, in the cities, in the, in the towns, people would pick up garbage as a concerted effort, volunteer, strictly volunteer, uh, as well empty paint cans, car batteries, tires, these kinds of garbage that just sit and contaminate the soil could also be collected for free for one day. This program really didn't cost that much money, but after 24 hours, the difference in what you could see with your eyes was truly amazing, and they do this every year. Here's an idea. For Rio, you could start this. Green Up Day in Rio. Uh, there are things that can be done. Okay, laws were passed about sulfur dioxide emissions and controls were enforced and companies were heavily fined. This was not received well by big business in America. They fought it 
they fought it tooth and nail. Believe me, uh, and it ha had to go through the courts, sued and countersued. It, it took years for them to actually enact this. Eventually, they did. Within a year or two, the forest grew back. Uh, lakes, uh, mountain lakes were restocked with fish and now have bountiful fish. It, it, I'll say one, one thing is that Mother Nature rebounds quickly, surprisingly mm -hmm. quickly, and it's amazing. And if you actually do something, you will be amazed how fast the earth will heal itself, truly, because I've witnessed it with my own eyes, and I, it's really impressive to see the difference when people are not short-sighted and they actually actively do things. Also, in America in 1972, uh, they had no laws about throwing garbage, littering. Now, I throw, uh, and <laughs> sometimes they get carried away, but I, I throw a candy bar wrapper. That's going to cost me $500 minimum if I get caught, okay? And people do get caught, and pe it's not a law that's ignored. It is enforced, definitely, all over the United States. The, all of these things and enactment of recycling programs, um, all of these things uh, combined. There's not one answer. There's a, you have to use a lot of different solutions. But I just want to share with you, Elena, I have seen the difference. I have seen things turn around and, and actually get better. It is possible. There is hope. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. But, um, here in Rio, we also have this kind of uh, fine with the person leaders. You get fined, um, but it doesn't work because uh, you don't have enough people to find the the polluters. You know, <laughs> uh, you don't have enough officers to. Sure, there's a cultural to, problem. To, yeah, that's cultural. People don't care. So um, sure. that I goes guess. from from the 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 citizen, the pers the single person to the government. Um, since mm -hmm. I was a little a little child, I I hear about the people trying to to stop the pollution in in the main bay we have here. Uh, it's called Guanabara Bay. That's the name that that. That's actually was the first Guanabara was the first name of our our city. Uh, Rio was called Guanabara uh, a while ago. Yeah, and uh, Rio means river. Yeah. And when Portuguese arrived here, they thought this bay was a river, and that's why our city is called Rio. So this bay is huge, and that's uh, also a, a tourist attraction. It's in all postcards. That's the bay you can see when you see uh, the, the Christ statue or Sugar Loaf. You see the bay, and the bay is extremely polluted in a way that maybe uh, we won't have conditions to um, to to have some sports in Olympic sports in two yeah. years. Uh, water sports, uh, canoeing, and some others I don't remember the name. Uh, maybe they, the athletes won't be able to to compete, to use the bay uh, because it's polluted. And I hear about this these programs, and people will spend gazillions of money of dollars trying to 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 stop pollu the pollution in the bay, but they can't. Be. Uh, corruption is something very serious yeah. here too. So people steal this money, and and the water continues to be extremely dirty. And you can see garbage floating, and oil, and everything. So, right. Uh, I, I'm glad to right. hear uh, that some um, some solutions uh, work. Actually, work, but. Uh, I, I really hope to see something working here soon because yeah. nowadays we don't. I have two things to say to that. One, part of it is education. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I Honestly, I remember as a child, I, clear as day, uh, maybe it's brainwashing, I don't know, but give a hoot. Hooty the owl says, don't pollute. <laughs> 
cartoon <laughs> owl with a little feather in his hat. Who do you yell at? Give a hoot. Don't pollute. As a child, I was brainwashed with this stuff. Also, the Indian, the American Indian, standing by the highway, and somebody throws a can. <laughs> it goes right by him, and he has a, He just stares. At, there's nothing in this commercial, and then he just stares at the camera, and a tear slowly rolls down mm -hmm. his cheek, very dramatically. Very dramatic. <laughs> Very, you know, I make fun of it now, but truly powerful, and I can visualize it in my mind, like, like crystal clearly. Honestly, um, I, I hate to say it, but I think these things did influence me. Secondly, so education, I think, is a huge factor. Secondly, I think most of the programs. This I told you about Green Up Day. That was a completely grassroots campaign. Not the government. Grassroots. Normal people, you and me, starting to do something actively. Actually, these things were really the most effective programs. Bottle and can deposit and return was actually a grassroots campaign. This was done by independent organizations. The government did not enact this. Most recycling campaigns that happened in the United States, grassroots not the government, because I think you have a, a very strong point. Especially if there's corruption involved, then it's even worse. But the mm -hmm. government takes forever to do anything. We all know that. It's true everywhere. And, you know, show me an efficient government and I'll show you, you know, heaven. <laughs> but I don't really think it exists. But, uh, well, heaven maybe. An efficient government, no. <laughs> uh but anyway, that's the other thing I just want to add. I think grassroots programs, in my opinion, are much more grassroots, meaning of the people, are much more effective. But Did you, can you write opinion. it down? Can you yes. write this word down, please? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a co-location. Well, uh, yeah, I think education is something ex ex fundamental. You know, if you don't have it. Nothing else will work. Yeah, uh, it, it's true. Uh, okay, grassroots program. Okay. Uh, English collocation meaning of the people, not initiated by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, or grassroots campaign to to do something. It's another common collocation. Uh, okay, Helena, this has been uh, awesome talking to you, but uh, let me uh, chat with Luau for a minute here. Okay. Luau? Mm hmm Talking about environment, we were all talking about problems in our areas, and but uh, Helena kind of, you know, Helena and I kind of broached the idea of solutions. So, I, I know you're a little late coming in, so... First, maybe could you mention a problem and and then start? Let's start talking solutions. What's a problem in your area? Well, I think problem, um, especially pollution problem in our country, are uh, everywhere. Because as I mentioned before, um, every every each measure in my city, if they you know uh, take this point. Uh, position and uh, they will demolish a uh, lot of the construction have already have been already done and uh, and make others so it's it's a virtuous cycle and um, everybody wants to uh, to to got the benefit from the new pro, uh, new uh, construct construction work works so um, always there are lots of construction works and uh, people um, people cannot you know uh, change this because they have the power and, but I, I think um, the most important thing is um, is um, there are lots of you know uh, the good experiences from the Western country as you mentioned in, in the UK or in, in Japan but people in our country they don't have the, those, those um, certain experience how important the you know uh, pollution uh, pollutions are so and if someone they experience they they will pay attentions for it and uh, probably there are uh, 
the people were talking about this and the media will talk, talk about this to make the, some change in the future, uh, to make the government make some um, behaviors. Um, but if, if there are no, nothing happened, I mean, um, there are no any, any tension, uh, attention about them. So um, it's a stage we have to experience those solutions. <laughs> I don't know. You know? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, all right. So it hasn't. Okay. Are Are you saying? Well, first of all, a couple great uh, English collocations because we are practicing English. A vicious cycle you used. It just keeps going around and around, and uh, and obviously negative. Using vicious. It's a great collocation. And one I want to share with you, there's no attention paid or nobody pays attention to whatever. There's no attention paid to pollution problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so if I understand you correctly, if I could uh, just to clarify, all right, there's things going on, but nobody's... Nobody seems to be concerned. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yet. Uh, no, it's totally conversely. I'm, I mean, if mm, in the early days we don't have pollutions because there are no any, um, no, no more constructions. But nowadays, a uh, lot of problem caused by uh, constructions or something else for purpose of the commer, commer, commerce, commercials. Um, for GDPs, I don't know, but um, if there's nothing happen, people will never know um, the pollution, so they, yeah. they will not pay any attention for them. So um, just uh, after the pollution ha have um, had made ha have happened, so people can pay their attention for them and talk about them and uh, to make some change <laughs> to force the government to. You know, take it seriously and make right. some new pol policy and rules. And that's my, what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Caused by construction, no s. Mm -hmm. Constructions oh, yeah. is one of those tricky words. There were. Uh, it depending on how you're using it, as individual things or talk about the general idea. If you talk about the general idea, it's uncountable. If you talk about specific structures. Uh, they built three new constructions on the island then like structures then it can be countable but if you're talking in general it's uncountable. Um, well is it, hasn't it become obvious? I mean when people start wearing masks to work <laughs> they gotta know something's going on. <laughs> uh, I mean yes. there's I, cause and effect, I, I mean, I understand that. If people don't see a, an effect, they're not going to be concerned about the cause. I understand that, but they m surely they must start seeing. I, I tell you, I have one concern about China, because there's been such a mass migration to the major cities, Shanghai, Beijing, uh, mm -hmm. etc. I, I'm is there anyone left in the country to go, holy crap, I can't grow rice anymore because the ground's too polluted? <laughs> I mean, will people in the city even notice that all the trees are dead on the mountainside because they're all in the city? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know and any people for this purpose move to the big city, but I know those people move to the big cities for the uh, convenience and you know activity uh, more activities and convenient uh, you know uh, okay. infrastructures and um, but um, I uh, actually I think um, most of people can just uh, experience the problem then they can think of the problem so um, I don't know. That's what. <laughs> that's my opinion, and I think most of the people, you know, for example, um, we we know there are lots of the uh, great experiences from the uh, developed countries, but people, um, people, people, if if they are if, if they are not happened on their um, true experience, ha hands-on experiences, they right. they, don't, they, they don't take care of it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I understand what you mean. There are many people who say, 
it, actually, there's polls taken and studies shown that <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm losing all faith in humanity, Luo, to tell you the truth. There are many studies that show that on a cold day, people don't believe in global warming, but on a hot day, they do. Uh, so yes. Stupid. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Uh, I mean, really. Uh, yeah, if I can't see it and touch it, it couldn't possibly exist. I don't know. I worry about humanity. <laughs> Seriously, people. You are not the center of the universe, okay? Get over yourselves, all of you, individually and collectively. <laughs> um, Wenting, just to answer your question in chat, I, I don't know the this, this situation with forests in China. I, I, I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, I was actually referring to my personal experience in the United States where, in fact, entire forests especially the higher up, we're dying because of acid rain, which is a real phenomenon, which goes hand in hand with manufacturing. And uh, obviously China is ma massively manufacturing, so I would be shocked. Yeah, I think so. A tree is dying in China because uh, the desert is expanding. Uh, many um, villages already uh, disappeared. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I believe that. I, it just seems logical to me. I, I haven't really read anything, but it it only makes sense. I don't know how it couldn't be happening. Um, but there I go, conjecture. Uh, Heidi, I, I wanted to talk to you again because I know Japan is very much in the forefront of these matters, of addressing environmental concerns. Yeah. Uh, before uh, Giuliani was the mayor, he started some clean up New York. Uh, York, he yeah. said uh, broken glass theory, right? If uh, there is a broken glass, they leave the, the glass broken, window, glass window broken. Uh, uh -huh. people, people throw the garbage or something, and uh, uh, this place became dirty and dirtier. Then perpetrators gathered at the place, so uh, they, uh, there are a lot of crimes happened. So at the first, uh, he said, uh, he need to clean up New York. Ah, I like that. That's very interesting. This actual, okay, his idea, if I could par paraphrase, being that pollution, okay, it starts with a broken window and then people throw garbage in and then there's crime in the area, uh, that pollution actually breeds social problems, crime. Yeah, that's Poverty. right. So education is very important. For example, mm -hmm. for example, Japan, uh, from the elementary school, or sometimes they uh, teach us, um, bring them other students to the city or town or park. They check the, the garbage or something. Mm -hmm. And now um, people don't throw away some garbage on the street or river. If someone threw the garbage or, uh, for example, a cigarette butt, other people will pick up it. So foreigners come to Japan, uh, they are uh, surprised because the streets are very clean. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know I, it, it's haphazard here in, in, you've been to the Philippines, you probably know this. For example, Manila, the, it's a giant city. The whole metropolitan area has 20 million people, okay? But it's, yeah, yeah. it's I, made up. I yeah. stayed in Manila several, several times, so I know. Uh, all right. It's very polluted, and those streets are quite it, dirty. It, it is, but have you been to Makati, where the business district is? Yeah, only that place is very safety. <laughs> That place is very safe. That place is also very clean. It's just yeah, yeah. One, it's one section of the city. Here's why. In other sections of the city, they don't have any laws or rules. In Makati, if I, and I have, I worked in Makati for a year, and so I had friends who smoked cigarettes, and many of them, I'm not talking one or two, I'm talking dozens of them, had to pay heavy fines for throwing a cigarette butt on the ground. It soon became very well known, you do not throw garbage on the ground in Makati. In addition, they put uh, garbage containers, garbage bins, garbage cans in the city, on the city street, fixed so they couldn't be stolen, fixed, attached, 
to the ground. And what do you know? What happened? Well, this, the city cleaned itself up because the police actually enforced the law. And before you know it, it, there's like no crime in this one area of the city. Meanwhile, right next door is a very dirty area. P Pasai is a pigsty, and crime is totally out of control. And it's right next door. They're not hundreds of kilometers away. They're two inches away. They border each other. It's amazing. It is amazing. So I just wanted to point that out. Mm -hmm. relative to your observation about uh, the broken glass theory. Mm -hmm. I, it, I believe in that. It, I mean, I've seen it. So, yeah, it's wild. It, it is wild because I lived in Makati and I lived near the border, and it is actually crazy. You, There's a distinct border. There's actually a railroad track. If you walk on this side of the railroad track, it's perfectly clean, and you are perfectly safe, even walking down the street at midnight. If you walk on the other side of the track, there's garbage everywhere, and you better watch what you're doing because your life is in jeopardy. It is crazy. I, I'm totally serious about that. Wild. Um, so anyway, very interesting. Very interesting class. Thanks, everyone. Um, actually, that was a great class. Very interesting. Thanks, Heidi, Helena, Luau, uh, Igor. Sorry I didn't get a chance to talk a little bit more with you. Uh, Wenting, uh, see you guys again soon, I hope. You guys have a great day. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.